Hello, everyone. Welcome to our service for Sunday, November 28th, 2021. It's Advent. It's the first Sunday in Advent. The first, and it is the beginning of the church's year. Happy New Year, everyone. Our service this morning takes the form of the great litany of the church. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and also with you. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, three persons and one God, have mercy on us. Lord, remember not our offenses, nor the offenses of our forebearers. Spare us, good Lord. Spare your people when you have redeemed, whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and mischief, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from your wrath and from everlasting condemnation. Good Lord deliver us from all spiritual blindness, from pride and vainglory and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us from all deadly sin and from deceits, from the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us from all false doctrine, heresy and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of your word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us. <clears throat> from earthquake and tempest, from drought, fire and flood, from civil strife and violence, from war and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your proclamation of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and bitter grief, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us in our times of trouble, in our times of prosperity, in the hour of death, and on the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. Receive now our prayers, Lord God. May it please you to rule and govern your holy church, universal and led, your church universal, and lead it in your way. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen your servant Elizabeth, our queen, in true worship and holiness of life. Be her defender and keeper, that she may always keep your honor and glory, and endue the leaders of this nation with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and defend all who strive for our safety and protection, and shield them in all dangers and adversity. Hear us, good Lord. Grant wisdom and insight to those who govern us, and to judges and magistrates the grace to execute justice and mercy. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of your word, that in their preaching and living they may declare it clearly and show its truth. Hear us, good Lord. 
bless all your servants, preparing for ministry in your church. Pour your grace upon them that they may serve others as Christ himself has served us for the building up of his body in love. Hear us, good Lord. Encourage and prosper your servants who spread the gospel in all the world and send out laborers into the harvest. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep your people that all will find and follow their true vocation and ministry. Hear us, good Lord. Give us a heart to love and reverence you, that we may delight, that we may diligently live according to your commandments. Hear us, good Lord. To all your people give growth in grace, to listen to your word, to receive it gladly, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand firm in the faith. Encourage the faint-hearted, raise up those who fall, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. To all nations grant unity, peace, and concord, and to all people give dignity, food, and shelter. Hear us, good Lord. Grant us abundant harvests, strength, and skill to conserve the resources of the earth, and wisdom to use them well. Hear us, good Lord. Come to the help of all who are in danger, necessity, and trouble. Protect all who travel by land, air, or water, and show your pity on all prisoners and captives. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen and preserve all women who are in childbirth, and all young children, and comfort the aged and the lonely. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphaned, the refugees and the homeless, the unemployed, and all who are desolate and oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Heal those who are sick in body or mind, and give skill and compassion to all who care for them. Hear us, good Lord. Grant us true repentance, forgive our sins, and strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we ask you, to hear us. Son of God, we ask you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Today, our, God, our uh, Old Testament reading is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 14 to 16. Jeremiah writes, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which I will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 25, verses 1 to 9. And it is a prayer for guidance and for deliverance. 
of David. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you to be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. St. Paul writes, how can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all the saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 to 36. Luke tells of the coming of the Son of Man. There will be signs in the sun the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great, and great glory. Now when these things begin to take take place. Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly. Like a trap, 
for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. So friends, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So, Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. I know that may sound a bit strange, uh, coming at the end of November. But today, today marks the first Sunday of the season of Advent and the beginning of the church's year for most churches in the Western, uh, Western tradition. It begins on the fourth Sunday before Christmas, the Sunday nearest to November 3rd, and ends on Christmas Eve, December 24th. The word Advent means coming, and the focus of the four weeks leading up to Christmas are designed to help us to anticipate the birth of Christ. The birth of Jesus of Nazareth the coming of our Savior on that first Christmas day. During the Advent season, as people of faith in Christ Jesus, we also anticipate the return of Christ the King on his second Advent, when he comes again to establish God's kingdom on the earth. Advent, therefore, is far more than simply a celebration of celebrating an event which happened some 2,000 years ago. It's about celebrating God's everlasting and revealing God's self. The everlasting God revealing God's self in the person of Jesus, Jesus the Christ, so that all of creation might be reconciled to God. As Christians and as Anglicans, we wait, we prepare, prepare, and we anticipate. Through the reading of scripture, through worship, through prayer, and in the ways we journey together once more toward the incarnation story. We anticipate, we ex look with expectation for the author and finisher of our faith. As you witness today, scripture readings for Advent will emphasize Christ's coming in both the first and second Advent. His birth, life, death, resurrection, and his coming again. Over the next few weeks, we'll hear the themes of personal accountability and faithfulness judgment for sin, and the hope of eternal life to the reality of that long-awaited Messiah. Through his focus, through this focus on past, present, and future, Advent also symbolizes the spiritual journey of each of us as individuals and as a fellowship of believers toward a life beyond that which we could ask or imagine. It may sound strange to wish everyone Happy New Year at this particular point in the calendar, but Advent affords us the opportunity to step outside that normal rhythm of cultural norms in order to experience the sacramental action derived from our focus on Jesus. As the noted Christian uh, writer Donald Schmidt tells us in his, uh, his article, The Symphony 
of the Christian year. If the rhythm of the church year can be harnessed and used appropriately, it can be a powerful vehicle for spiritual formation for both individuals and for communities. The church year is far more than a bunch of dates on a calendar. It can also serve as a vehicle, maybe, maybe similar to a, uh, a musical score of, so of sorts, that unifies Anglicans and other Christians in worship around the world, bridging cultures, traditions, ethnic backgrounds, and languages. Perhaps you who listen to who are listening to this uh, video might experience this when you travel. Even when visiting an Angl Anglican church in countries where the predominant language is not English, it's possible to understand the key happenings of a congregation's liturgy and worship. It helps us to feel as if we are part of a Christ-centered family of believers, no matter where we might end up. The church's year also has a way of helping Christians to take themselves out of the intoxicating busyness of secular life. It is designed to provide space for God in the hustle and bustle of demand of the demanding commercial activities of Christmas, New Year, Valentine's, Easter, Mother's Day, and so on and so on. Each originally established by the church for much different purposes than we have today. Just as our prevailing culture calls us to prepare gifts and food and celebrations as part of the Christian Christmas rush, so too the church is called to a year centered around the life, teachings, ministry, and example of Jesus of Nazareth. Like the anticipation we feel as we await the giving and receiving uh, of gifts on Christmas Day, so too Advent calls us to anticipate the coming of the Messiah to all humanity by giving of ourselves, our souls, and our bodies as living sacrifices for the cause of Christ. In this way, we are called again and again to make room for that which God has already infused within us, to order our lives outside the flow of the prevailing commercial culture, to orient ourselves toward an understanding that the source of all meaning is God the Father, as Jesus has shown us. The fact that we begin the church year somewhat out of sync with the, with the calendar year is, in my judgment, a bit of an advantage in that it can, it can act as a counterpoint to the almost overwhelming influences of commercial and secular thinking. The church's year designed around the experience, message, and example of Jesus of Nazareth is meant to remind us of our Christian vocation and help us in our journey of faith. We're called to prepare ourselves in mind, body, and spirit to meet the lowly Savior at Christmas, the risen and triumphant Savior at Easter, and by extension, to anticipate the conquering Savior as King of kings and Lord of lords when he returns to rule God's almighty kingdom on this earth. The journey through the church's year and our journey through life for the baptized Christian is one that is not done alone. We do so by journeying and encouraging one another and by calling on God's Holy Spirit to strengthen and uphold us in our faithful calling. Friends, the job of the Christian quite simply, is to feel the power of God working in us and through us in celebration of his redeeming love, grace, and mercy. Just as the sun 
moon, and stars are prophetic signs of God's power in the world. In the same way, the changing seasons of the church, church's year focuses our attention on the prophetic coming of God's kingdom for all eternity. Even when the world around us seems to be in utter turmoil, we can be assured that as we walk together in faith, we can face the future with God's promise of salvation as our guide. As the Gospel of Luke reminds us, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. On this first Sunday in the church's year, let us stand together in hope, love, joy, and peace, illuminated by the life, death, resurrection, teachings, and example of Jesus Christ. Let us stand with anticipation, with, held, with heads held high, to receive the Son of Man, yesterday, today, and for all eternity. May he so strengthen our hearts in, in holiness that we may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. And this we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, honor, dominion, and glory on this day and forevermore. Amen. So the collect for the first Sunday in Advent. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common <laughs> supplications to you. And you have promised, through your well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is in the fullness of time, came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, that we without shame or fear may rejoice 
to behold his appearing. Now a prayer offered in troubled and anxious times. Blessed Lord, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, look with compassion on your people in their distress. Give us a clearer understanding of ourselves and your love for us. Reveal your will to us. Cast out all fear and doubt and grant us that peace which passes all understanding for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as we bring this short time of worship and celebration to a close, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.